The Fed knows they've got to raise rates. Why are we going to wait until March? Why not just do it now? Uh, you know, I'll answer that two ways, Stephanie. First of all, there are all the people who think the Fed should have done it already, and it's behind the curve and uh, is late catching up. On the other hand, th the Fed doesn't really have to do anything to have markets react. Uh, the Fed made a pivot back in November and said it was going to be a lot more uh, tough in terms of removing stimulus from the economy, and markets have reacted. Stocks uh, are down about on the Nasdaq about 15 or 16 percent since then. But more importantly, interest rates have risen. For example, the 30-year mortgage is about half a percentage point higher now. Uh, some auto finance rates are up. So the Fed has a little time to actually follow through on what it says. But the Fed is powerful enough that all it has to do is talk and rates go up. So it's going to be OK for a little bit until it reacts perhaps in March and raises rates. Mr. Ratner, inflation is a problem not just here, around the world. But in our new NBC poll, 61 percent of people say that their income is falling behind their cost of living, their cost of food, gas going up big time. Inflation is a huge issue for the American people, specifically the American voter. How fast could prices start to go down or could inflation start to slow if we see rates rise? Well, effective rates on inflation that takes time to operate. You raise rates and then people have to start saying to themselves, do I really need to buy that new house? Do I really need to buy that new car? Business has to say, do I really need to go out and do a financing and buy more capital equipment? It is a long, slow process, particularly when you're talking about rate increases of a quarter of a percent each quarter or something like that. That's a very small impact on the market. So I don't think you're going to see the impact of the Fed on inflation anytime soon. The question is whether inflation will start to go down of its own accord, whether it's a supply problem, some of these uh, port problems go away, et cetera, et cetera. That's what the Biden administration is in effect staking its political future in this midterm election on. Uh, private forecasters, people like Larry Summers, myself, whatever, uh, I think are not nearly so optimistic about inflation. I think you're going to see very substantial inflation at least throughout this year. Mr. Leesman, let's talk about the markets. People are obviously panicked about these huge market swings. But are we misinterpreting the fact that they're a positive? The fact that the Fed can take this security blanket away and the markets and the economy should and could stand on its own, isn't that a positive? I mean, stocks will now get back to fundamentals. I think there's a lot of upside to the Fed uh, removing some of the stimulus from the market that artificially inflated both the economy and asset prices. Um, you know, you're, there are still, despite the sell off in the market, massive gains. If you happen to have been smart enough to step into the market at the lows of the pandemic back in March, you'd be up 90 percent still. Uh, the markets are off from their all-time highs a big way, but but not so much overall. Um, we do want to get back to a more normal economy. We need the Fed to remove some of the stimulus. And it looks like parts of the economy, Stephanie, um, are going to do pretty well. Consumer um, uh, spending should be OK because the unemployment rate is very low. Uh, wages, uh, although they're not they've not kept pace with inflation, they are up. So people should have money to spend. And it does look like the economy can, despite some Federal Reserve of rate increases stand on its own. Then, Steve, you know uh, economics and you know politics. How does Biden thread this needle? We are in a strong economic recovery. Unemployment is low. Wages are up. But as you pointed out, we are in for a very rough ride on the inflation front. Yeah, a couple of things. First, uh, I am slightly less optimistic than Steve is about a so-called, I think what he's implying is a kind of soft landing out of all this. I think that uh, we're going to have substantial inflation. I think people's real wages are going down. And as you talked about in that poll, that has a significant impact on how they think about everything, what they spend, their politics, and so on and so forth. The stock market, I believe, is very much tied to interest rates. I think interest rates are a good part of the reason why we had those, those huge moves in the stock market that Steve described. And I think as interest rates go up, it is not the friend of, of the stock market. The Biden administration is attempting to position this, one, as a worldwide phenomenon. There's inflation everywhere, and there's some truth to that, not 100 percent truth, but some truth, and that we're just part of all that. And secondly, blaming it on supply line problems, 
Supply line problems have contributed to it, but part of why we have supply line problems is because we have so much demand. And why do we have so much demand? Because we've poured this massive amount of stimulus into the economy, an unprecedented amount of stimulus, more than the New Deal we've put in the economy. And that's created this huge consumer demand, which has created inflation, which has created supply problems. And all of that, I think, unfortunately, I say as a supporter of the Biden administration, unfortunately is going to be very problematic for the administration over these next some months. Then, then, Mr. Ratner, what should their narrative be, right? If raising rates is good for the economy but bad for markets, what story are they supposed to tell? Well, the story they've been telling, you saw a bit of it at Biden's press conference the other day, is one that this is kind of in the hands of the Fed, and the Fed should do what it has to do to tame inflation. So it's sort of, it's sort of passing that off to the Fed, and that's, that's not wrong. It is the Fed's responsibility. And secondly, as I said, they're trying to blame this on external factors, worldwide phenomenon. They've stopped using the word transitory, but, they, but if you look at their forecast, if you look at anybody's forecast, they essentially are for sharply declining inflation in the course of this year. I'm just far less sanguine about that actually happening uh, than some of these forecasters, and certainly than the White House.